on earth is going on out there? And I'm a witch! King Charles' new portrait is something straight out of Ghostbusters. <gasps> Admit it, you saw the movie. No photographs, please! Slides are available in the gift shop. Eh? Uh-huh. And then there's Ireland's Bambi thug. And I'm a witch! Well, yeah, she's a witch that Eurovision recently put into its semifinals for the competition's 180 million viewers. Buried in the ground and to its strings, I bind your vows. Are our cultural parents going pagan? <laughs> Find out now. Okay, yes, the West is walking away from its Christian heritage and returning to its demonic origins. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask that if you like this video to go ahead and give it a thumbs up at the end. But if you're afraid you're going to forget, go ahead and just click that like button right now. I'd greatly appreciate it. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. In fact, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and share this video with a friend. You can also go to PastorAJ.com in order to partner with Gospel Ministries or sign up for my weekly email newsletter. In addition to that, follow me on other social media platforms at Pastor AJ Platt and buy my new book, End Times Mission, an introduction to post-millennial eschatology. It'll knock your socks off. Now back to our Euro-pagan friends across the Atlantic. You know, this is a topic that I talk to people about from time to time, and it is is the re-emergence of paganism on the historical scene. We've seen it taking place in our own culture here in America. In fact, as recently as five years ago, I was invited to a pagan wedding, which I did not attend. But what gives? Where is this renewed interest in the religions of a bygone era coming from? Especially in a scientific age. Well, I think there's a lot to be said for that, especially as it pertains to science or what we call science. Stripping society of its Christian roots, taking prayer out of public schools, challenging and changing the definitions of gender, marriage, and human relationships. Basically, reality as we've understood it for, I don't know, thousands of years. You know, what we've come to see is that this age of science never really was neutral. All of these attacks on the Bible and Christianity, and even the heritage of our country here in America, all of that has been leading somewhere, and we're seeing the fruit of it right in front of our faces. It's coming into our living rooms every day. Couldn't help but think this very thing as King Charles unveiled his new portrait Something that, like I said in the introduction, is straight out of Ghostbusters. Here's the video of the official unveiling, if you haven't seen it already. I wonder what his thoughts were right there. Apparently, the king sat for this portrait some three years ago, and according to the artist, the red color was pulled from his uniform, and it symbolizes his royalty. Yet I think to the sane person looking at this thing, the king's seemingly ghostly fade into a red backdrop conjures up images of demons, hell, and the devil himself. Look, I'm not being judgmental. I'm just telling you what the initial impressions of people are when they look at something like this. Whether it's demonic or not, who knows? Certainly demons exist. We saw them in the Bible. Jesus cast them out of people. In the ancient Jewish mind, demons were actually responsible for all of the paganism, the worship of false gods, and even many of the evils we see in our world. So why do we want to play around with this stuff, especially if we live in an enlightened culture? You know, the West, a place in human history that has had our eyes opened to the truth of Jesus and the Bible. We live and walk in the freedom of Christ. Why would we want to return to the doctrines and the bondage of demons? All of this brings me to the most recent Eurovision contest Yes, it's a contest that was viewed by some 180 million people. Just for contrast, the Super Bowl this year, you know, the Taylor Swift championship game, only 120 million people saw Travis Kelsey embarrass himself when that thing was all said and done. And I say that to say this is a big deal. When we talk about art and artistic 
expression. We could only push that so far. And that's exactly what Bambi Thug did in her performance, in which she promoted immorality, perversion, and witchcraft, or she describes it, the paganism of her ancestors, to an entire continent of impressionable people. Bambi is a native of Ireland. Yes, the Ireland of St. Patrick. And this was her performance in the semifinals at Eurovision. Okay, you can see here her propensity for chanting and the pentagram. Yeah, that's a satanic symbol in case you didn't know. It's the upside down star. That's where her video began. Now, her performance closed with the phrase, crown the witch. And apparently she cast some magic spell at the end there as well. Something from Harry Potter called the death spell. I'm not sure who's really going to die from this. Certainly she and others will experience eternal death if they aren't covered in the blood of Jesus. But this is what was most disturbing to me. Take a look at the cheers of the audience celebrating this blatant display of paganism. So, so sad. And if you're like me, you can't help but wonder, how did we get to a place where people are returning to the mythological roots of our pagan ancestors? You see, we've spent now centuries stripping God out of everything, undermining the very foundations, the fabric of our civilization. But here's the thing. It wasn't done in the name of demons openly. It was done in the name of the Enlightenment. It was done in the name of evolution. It was done in the name of communism. And here we find ourselves today openly celebrating the things that our ancestors left thousands of years ago. So again, I ask, is it a big deal? And how far can we push artistic expression, because if you think this is just art, think again. In fact, listen to Bambi Thug in her own words explain why she is so special. How do you feel qualifying Ireland after six years of non-qualifications? What makes you special? What makes me special? (laughs) Come on! Come on! Do you know... Do you know what makes me special? I'm a queer. And I'm a witch! 
Yeah. I don't think that kind of stuff makes a person special. What makes a person special is the way that they were uniquely created by the one true God and his son, Jesus Christ. The way we're gifted by his Holy Spirit to impact the world around us, displaying God's character to those who need it, and communicating the gospel. Let's not forget about that. Being a witch doesn't make you special. It just means that you're misguided and you're practicing evil. And I know, I know, you might think that I'm being judgmental. You might feel like I'm a little too tight around the collar. Don't we need to loosen up a little bit? I think we need to realize here what she thinks about her practice of witchcraft and what this performance means to her. I was recently grieved beyond words when I saw her explanation of why she gives such an open expression to her pagan practices through her music. Take a look at what she says here, because it reveals that this performance is more than just artistic expression. Again, like, you know, I'm, I, I, I want to understand, I want to seek knowledge. Witchcraft is kind of a, a big part of your, your life, isn't mm-hmm. it? You yeah. know, so what does that journey look like? Was there a out of world moment or was it that you made you want to pursue mm. witchcraft? Okay, so directly asking her why she utilizes witchcraft so much in her performances. After, did, it, did it come to you? Like, again, p- please enlighten me as, as much as you can. So I'm Irish. So our heritage before Catholicism and everything was pagan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so- and, and, and you've got to go back, I, I mean, to like the 400s. A.D., really. I mean, to go back to the time of St. Patrick, like, that's how far back you've got to go. So I think it's, like, in my blood quite a bit. And as blood. a kid living in From the countryside, I would always or 2000 make years ago. potions. I, if I was in trouble, I would run across the road to the forest and go and talk to the trees. I would, like, I always knew to ground myself I had to put my feet into dirt. I was very much a little nature kid. Boy, what is it that makes a person transition from a love for nature, which is very normal and natural? I mean, who doesn't have an appreciation for the beauty and the majesty of God's creation? But, but what is it that takes a person from that into the depths and the darkness of the demonic? Yeah, I kind of lost my my tie to it, I think, for a little while when I was in secondary school because I went to like a, a Catholic convent school and I was a Protestant was a in the Catholic pagan. school. So it was a weird one. I actually, I lived in Muswell Hill and I made friends with these two ladies who ran a vintage shop, very witchy ladies, and kind of got back into it with them. And they introduced me to this woman, Valerie, who actually made the puppets for the film Labyrinth. So her, so Hoggle was based on her dad, and we would meet at her house for full moon meetings, and we would chat magic and meditate and drink wine. I'll tell you what, shows the power and the influence of your social circles. That's one of the reasons accountability is so important from a Christian perspective, why God wants us to be a member of a local body of believers, you know, with a pastor, with a a, a leadership structure, so that we can be discipled by Jesus. That requires other people in our lives. That's usually where discipleship takes place. It's in our relationships with others and how we respond to that. But they say that you are the product of the five most people, the five people that you hang around the most. And so, man, does it just break your heart to hear her talk about how, you know, she was influenced by another person or people, and they got her into these sessions, these witchcraft seances. And there's just something about the idea that they drank wine together. It's almost like an unholy communion. I said to Ruth, I was like, who's that lady? Is she taking photos of me? Ruth was like, oh, that's Julie Anderson. And then Julie came up to me and she was just like, we need to know each other. And basically was saying that I'm like a a healer witch and she does tarot with me. She does I Ching. Yeah, I'm a real good spiritual advisor. I see her mentioning here tarot cards, you know, uh, communicating with the spiritual realm, the dead, you know, that kind of a thing, astrology, spells. This has been around for thousands of years. This isn't new. And and in the ancient Jewish mind, this stuff was introduced to humanity through demons. It was an unholy way of trying to attain the things that we want or feel like we need from life, filling that void in our soul that only God can really ultimately fill for us. All of those things that she's mentioning were specifically forbidden by the Torah for the ancient Jews. And there's a reason for that. It's because this stuff isn't good for your soul. This stuff teaches you upside down things about life and God and his requirements on you as a human being. Is that important? 
so important. I mean, like, I, as I said, I, I started therapy recently, but I, it's the first time in my whole life I've had it. Spirituality and witchcraft for me has been a saving grace in, in terms of getting through things. And also, you know, a, a lot of the time people are like, oh, you're doing spells, blah, blah, blah. They know that is real. And like, I'm not trying, I'm not saying that I can like move things like mm -hmm. with my eyes, but like spellcraft is, is very much on like quantum level of, um, I guess changing your brain, you know, changing what you look for, you as, like looking for more positives or looking for change, then you'd see the change. So spells in her mind, I guess, are something that's not casting a, an influence over the physical world, but something that changes you on the inside, maybe changes your mindset or your perceptions about right and wrong. Things like crystals where you say there's rose quartz for self-love, you know that's for self-love. Therefore, when you're holding it, that's what you're you're calling into yourself so it's like you're putting attributes on these physical objects to help you achieve it yourself right you know that so I, I think you can see a distinction there between magic which that's what she's talking about witchcraft you're you're looking at physical attributes in these items that are going to somehow bring you good luck or prosperity whereas the bible teaches that god is near to every man and each and every one of us are seated at the Father's right hand in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That's what spellcraft is really for me. Um, is, there, is, is it is it spellcraft, not witchcraft? Is that an incorrect term? Or? No, witchcraft, but okay. I'm just talking about the spells. No, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, so there you see that this is more than just a performance. I think for her, paganism and witchcraft are a connection to the spiritual realm. And she believes that as she's performing, as she's doing these things for these large crowds... For her home country that's cheering her on, she is being influenced by demons and spiritual forces in dark places. And wow, this just breaks my heart when I see it. As a pastor, as somebody who cares about people, I know how much God loves Bambi Thug. I know how much God loves her fans. I know how much God loves Ireland because he sent St. Patrick there centuries ago. And now to see many there turning back to their pagan roots and many in Western culture, Many in America today, turning back to their pagan roots, it's so sad because God has so much better for you. But what are your thoughts when you see some of these things? Do you feel like it crosses the line? Can somebody honestly be influenced by the demonic realm, by these kinds of things, and claim that it's just art? And where do we draw the line on it? How do we stop this kind of thing from happening in our culture? Certainly God honors the culture that honors him with long life and abundance and all the good things that come with knowing him. So why would we walk away from all of that? And how can you, as the viewer, be a part of reaching a world that is going so far astray? Along those lines, I want to invite you to pray with me right now. Not just to pray for this culture, which I'm always doing, because God knows this culture needs him. God knows our country needs him. Our communities need him. I'm praying not just that the community gets him, but I'm praying that God gives you, as a Christian, the boldness to proclaim Jesus to Ireland, to Europe, to Middle America, and to all of creation. Don't be afraid to stand up in your school board and at your place of work and proclaim the name of Jesus. America doesn't write the rules of culture. Jesus does. And the best way we can truly love others is by preaching his truth to them. So I want to invite you right now, if you are held captive by the supernatural, if you're involved in witchcraft, if, if you feel like you're in a dark place and you need God to break through, I want to encourage you to say this prayer with me right now because I think it'll change your life. We're just going to invoke another name over you and your life. It's the name of Jesus. So let's ask him to come into our hearts right now. Just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I realize I can't break free from the chains that bind me. My eyes have been opened to your truth, and I want to ask that you come and free me from the spiritual slavery that I'm currently in. Make me a child of God by giving me your Holy Spirit to be with me on the inside so that I can live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, God has come into you and you will never be the same. I know that might sound like magic, but I promise you it's not. 
If anything, it's the magic of the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship that changed my life many years ago, and God will do the same for you just by proclaiming the name of Jesus over the spirits that are oppressing you. And that's what we do right now. We proclaim the name of Jesus over Ireland, over Eurovision, over any name, any communistic regime that would stand against him. We proclaim the name of Jesus. His throne is higher. His ways are better. And his plan will pave the way for everyone to have peace one day. It's his name we proclaim. Hey friends, that's it for today. Like I said already, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. And make sure you keep serving and pursuing Jesus. This world so desperately needs to hear his name. I'll see you in the next video, friends. May the peace of Jesus rest on you and your family.